How did you like that? Because that's exactly what we're gonna create and much more. Just keep watching. The time for tea. First off, we're gonna create a circular light throne. Shift A and let's add the cylinder. S, Z and scale it all the way down. I think I like this. S scale again. I'm gonna scale it so it kind of fits the camera. G, Z, move it all the way down again. Go to side view and try to make it so it's aligned with the, yes, the very bottom line of the X axis. Switch to the face selection mode. Select that very top of our, yes, throne. Press I for the inset, make it this size or any how you want. I'm gonna press it again, make another inset. You'll see just right away exactly why we are doing this. So now we just got two inner circles. I will hold Alt and then we'll click on this edge over here to get the ring. Yes, the ring that will light and will be lighted. Lay on, press I for extrude and just pull it down. I will stick with this depth. Zero to the camera view. Get out of the edit mode by pressing tab. Now I'm gonna press Shift D to copy the whole mesh object. Again, we can just move by G, Z and up. Again, we will press tab to get to the edit mode. Select everything with D, A. S to scale and make it just smaller than the previous one, like this. Again, get out from the object mode. Make sure to just position it so it's kind of touching the other circle. Again, Shift D to copy that circle. G, move it up, tab again. S to scale and make it smaller again. So that's the third layer of our light throne. Number three to the side view, G, Z, and again, move it so it touches the other. If you want to make the edges smooth, we're just gonna go to the modifiers. First of all, we're gonna add the edge split, and then we will add the subdivision surface. Now you can see that, yeah, it, the faces got kind of split it, uh, so it's more smooth. Now just click right on that object and Choose Shade Smooth. So finally, you can see that even with really low poly, we can get nice smooth surfaces. So we'll just repeat this for the rest of the rings. And that was the magic of Blender. Now let's make a card. Shift A and now we'll add the cube, yes. It's very surprising <laughs> that the card is actually a cube, right? So, first of all, we're gonna go to the very top view, tap to the edit mode, S to scale, lock it in the X axis, and just make it really thin. So, just choose any uh, you know thickness that corresponds to the cards that you want to make. So, I'll just go with something like this a pretty thick one. Side view again, S scaling in the y-axis and just pull it so it's yeah it's gonna be a nice card that will somehow be in that ring so i think this kind of width is nice now let's go to the camera view and tap back to the object mode g z and move it up again to the edit mode s to scale z and now just make the card so it's kind of more even and not that tall right so i think that this suits really nice get back g z and just adjust the you know height of it so it's more close to the throne in case you want the rounded edges let's go to the edit mode i will now switch to the edge selection and now we'll press shift and just select those four edges like just that Control b just play with the mouse until you see the rounding with the wheel on your mouse you can increase yes 
the faces. So the more you add, the more kind of you know smooth uh, the whole um, rounding will be. So I think I'll go with something like this. That's pretty nice. We can also make the card fancier. So let's tap to the edit mode, select the face selection. Just gonna select the very yes front face of it. Press I to create the inset and now just pull it inwards. So now we kind of get, you know, the border. Now we can press E to extrude. You can either extrude it out, but we will actually extrude it inwards. So there will be this little edge between the card um, content and the um, frames. So this way we can create different frames uh, for different cards. So that's actually gonna be something that you'll see later. And the last step are the materials. First up, let's start with the material of the light ring. So I'm just gonna switch to the shading mode. So we're gonna see the material straight away. So new, I'm gonna rename it to a ring. And in here in the base color, we're just gonna pull the colors all the way down to around this position to get a grayish color. Then we're gonna add another material, new. This one will be a ring light. And from this principled BSDF, we're gonna switch the surface to emission. So the material will be kind of glowing and emitting light. So I'm gonna give it a string of 15. Now I'm gonna press tab. Now you can see that we got to the edit mode. So let's just make sure that we have the face selected. Hold Alt and click on the edge of this inner ring or circle. So we got all those faces selected. And we're just gonna click on assign. So now you can see that this ring material got assigned to just these faces. So this is the way you can kind of partially, um, you know, create materials for certain faces or the faces. And at this point, it's pretty straightforward. So we're just going to do the same for the rest of the two rings. So the materials for the card are done. Let's proceed with the card. So I'll get one, click on new. This is going to be the card one. As we go to the base color, we can also just pick kind of a darky orange golden color. This way we're gonna get it darker. So let's stop somewhere around here. Then we can move a little down. I'm gonna increase the metallic value here to almost number one. So I'm gonna go with 0 0.85 to make it really kind of, you know, metallic. And uh, we can also just reduce the, thick, uh, the roughness uh, to around 0 0.2 uh, to get it really shiny. Let's move back upwards, plus create the new material and let's name it a card content. So now we're just gonna tap in. It's gonna be very similar as with the lights. So I'm gonna select just the front face where the card content will be. I will select the card content and assign it. So we can later on put some images in here uh, by modifying this card content material. So that's why it's gonna be more convenient. I'm just gonna reduce its color to a dark one so it's gonna look nice in the renders and later on we can just replace it with any image. Now when we are done with all the materials, we can play with it a little bit, especially with the emission color of those rings. So I actually like using this kind of a blue teal color, which is really looking nice, you know, in the dark space. Let's add some card content because you definitely don't want empty cards, right? So just select the card, press tab, make sure that you have the face selection mode, select the front face where the content will be, right click and then click on unwrap, all right? Then we're gonna go to the UV editing and now you can already see that we have this face unwrap here in the UV editor. Let's find the materials, find the card content and in here we're gonna change the base color to the image texture, then click on open and I already prepared a UV texture here of mine. Yes, with the Jedi's from the previous collection that we did together. So just to make sure that we're gonna see the texture on our card, we're gonna switch to that shading mode. And now you can see that we have the picture already on our card. UV texturing is really powerful because we can exactly say 
and position the texture. So let's select that face that got unwrapped, press G. Now you can see that we can freely move it around and find that perfect spot to show the content on our card. So I'm just gonna lock it in the X axis and just move it so it's exactly in the middle of our beautiful sober Jedi's. Let's switch back to layout and the very last touch for our card will be just tilting it. So I'm gonna go to the camera view, then press R to rotate, lock it in the Z axis and we're gonna tilt the card slightly towards the camera so it's kind of tilt and this way it looks way better than just from the front. So you just learned how to create one awesome card. But what if you want to create a collection of hundreds of unique cards like that? And don't you dare to think about creating one by one manually because we have the Raptor plugin for Blender. So we can easily get things like this. All that in just few clicks. Let's first walk through the collections that I added meanwhile. So first of all, I created the attribute called throne where we can see a common, rare and artifact trait. So this one is the common throne. Then we have the rare throne. So you can see that it kind of changed the shape as well as the emission and color. And then lastly, we have the artifact one that is also kind of nice and will actually glow a pinky color. So those are the thrones. Then I have the attribute that is called card. So that's actually this one. And in here I have a special trait that is dedicated to the material change. So if you look closely to the materials of this card, and here we can see several materials for the frame of our card that will be randomized. Okay, there is a special prefix for the name of both the trade collection as well as the materials. It's not important now, but the prefix is important to get it work with the Raptor generator. And lastly, we have the card content material that is assigned to the very front face that is now being pinged in here and that one I switched from a single image to an image sequence and what it does is that when I move the frame number you can see that the pictures are now being changed and that's because there is an image sequence that is tied with the frame number so this is the newest version of the Raptor generator we can already see that it recognized the attributes card and the throne and now when I click on analyze the scene it recognizes the materials of the card. So you can now see the black, neon, pink, and all those colors that we put in that material slot over there in the materials. And then we also have the throne, the common rare, and the artifact. So it corresponds exactly to the collections that I showed you at the beginning. So when it comes to the generation of large collections, we can set different rarities here, but we will just leave it as it is. What's important here is the maximum number of combinations. So we can see that there is 21 combinations. And right now we'll just leave everything as it is and we'll just click on generate. To check the results of the generation process, we can change the frame number. So when I change it, you can see that we have the change of the throne and also the cards. So you probably might have noticed that the only thing that is not changing is the frame of the card. So even though the randomization of the card material actually happened, we just can't see it here in Blender because of technical limitations. As soon as we scroll all the way down to render settings of the Raptor plugin, we can see a custom render. And this one will render the output with randomized materials. So this is the result of custom rendering. We can see that each combination is unique. And of course, each card has a different frame. Each combination also has its metadata generated. As usual, you will find the files to download down in the description. And Tang is out.